Good afternoon. Welcome to week four. We're almost to the mid, the mid term. You guys have done a great job so far. I've really enjoyed reading the reflections that you've got and some of the things that you're thinking and applying what you have been reading about. And I think that this is the time now, this week, week four, is where we start to really dig into the strategies and the um, practicalities of how to work with English language learners. And so um, with that, we're going to start looking at specific um, frameworks that have been designed and researched in order to um, help students make sense of the texts and the movies and the um, all of the material that's going to be thrown at them in an academic language environment. Um, and with that, we're just going to pick on two strategies that have been used for a while. Um, one is called PSYOP. PSYOP stands for Sheltered Instruction Observation Protocol. And um, you'll watch a video that talks about the process of research that was um, followed in order to create this tool to work with English language learners. It's been around for um, at least 10, maybe 15 years. So it's um, been around the block. It's been, the research for it has been purchased by Pearson. So the videos that you're watching will be from Pearson. And um, as you watch the first video, off to the right hand side of the screen you will notice that um, there is a list of other videos that are um, associated with the, the first video that's on the site and they say component one, component two, component three, etc. and each one of those is a different strategy. So you can watch that first video of the research that went into creating and kind of the justification for PSYOP and then in order to um, get some more exposure to the actual strategies because it's not going to be helpful just to listen to some uh, justification about why this technique works. You need to actually see what they're doing to make it work. So those videos are off on the right hand side of the screen um, and they will give you all sorts of information about scaffolding and ac academic language development and um, literacy strategies and techniques and how to deliver lessons and that's what you're going to be watching so there's about eight of those components watch through all of them if you actually want to get some really um, structured input on how to work with teaching language for English language learners the other uh, technique that is being looked at this week is called PLAD which is guided language acquisition uh, delivery delivery design both of those D's in there. Um, and that's mostly implemented with uh, elementary students. And it's a great tool to use for um, really setting students up for success in terms of how to put their sentences together and how to um, appeal to the way that they learn as children and help them to produce um, the kind of language around the academic content that they need to learn. So. Um, pushing them further up from that basic interpersonal communication skills up to the academic language proficiency that we want them to be able to produce from a good education. Um, both of these methods have been tested and tried and true and they're going to definitely um, push forward the abilities and um, capacities for those English language learners. Um, the components for the PSYOP are going to go through lesson preparation, building background, um, comprehensible input and what that is, strategies, specific literacy strategies, the interaction component that's necessary in the classroom for, especially for the, well, for all ages really, um, practice and application of the strategies, lesson delivery, and then review and assessment. Those are the different components that you're going to be looking at with PSYOP. And that's the first part of this week's work. The second part is um, writing down your lesson, your language um, learning experience. If you don't have any language learning experience, um, you're going to want to speak to why not? Have you ever been encouraged? Um, does anybody you know speak another language? Um, how do you feel about that? And I think that if your language learning has come while you were in school between K through 12, a lot of times um, for kiddos, this can be very subjective how they feel about learning. And I want you to kind of explore into those subjective 
um, non-tangible um, emotional responses, <laughs> things that are really impacting how kids feel about what they're learning and whether they continue it or not. Like, why didn't you continue it? And what, what voices were you hearing around you that spoke to how valuable or not valuable that was? And what was it about the teaching that was um, promoting or keeping you from continuing on in that foreign language? And then the final thing is just to read that um, text that's on the website this week and then do the reading group reflection for that. And that um, assignment is under the reading group link. So at any rate, you guys are doing great. And I hope that you are um, feeling that this week's lessons will give you an um, in-depth and more pragmatic. Next week also we'll continue. And then also balance expectations because it's an online course. Unfortunately, there's no class component to this that will allow us to actually see that. So managing expectations about what you can get out of an online course, but also getting a rich exposure to um, the actual things that are happening in English language learning um, environments. Good luck, and as always, please continue to send me your questions if you've got them. Thanks.